those two are journeying towards Dartington. Where in the 1920s, an American heiress began a revolution in both farming and education. Philip, Bob, welcome to Dartington. And you are Celia. I'm Celia. Celia, this is very special, it's isn't very it? very beautiful, isn't this it? This is a medieval courtyard, 15th century, but completely transformed by Dorothy Elmhurst. Would you be kind enough to show us around? I'd love to. Come on. OK. <laughs> Dorothy Whitney was fabulously wealthy and determined to spend her fortune in furthering the progressive causes she believed in. She met her second husband, Leonard, the farmer son of an English parson, in 1919. Together, they established a centre for their ideas and moved to the Devon countryside. He realised that there were different ways that you could do agriculture, that there was something lacking in the British education system. She knew that things needed to move on from Victoriana, if you like. So they then discovered they had an opportunity together to make something very special, and they came here to do it. What condition was the estate in when they got here? It was completely ruined. Really? There was one farmer living here. The courtyard was a farmyard, and they restored the building and added to it. And if you want to come with me, I'll show you some of that oh, work yes, that they really did. Was. The couple spent millions over the next few years, providing a huge boost to the local economy. They set up farming and forestry projects and in 1926 established a co-educational boarding school. What would it have been like building this up from, from the ground, really? It was a busy and building community of so many different kinds of people and interests, and that's what they fostered. They started a new school because they knew that the schooling methods that existed didn't work for all children. So they just got on with it and started a school that transformed the way that we're all taught now. With no prefects, uniforms or punishment, the Dartington School was extremely advanced. The children here spent less time in the classroom and learned instead whilst working on the estate. That belief that you could teach people of the future, that you could welcome the writers of the welfare state here to write the Labour Party manifesto in 1945, <laughs> that you could mix work on the land with art, and all of those things melded together. The arts were at the core of the Dartington experiment, and many outstanding figures were attracted to the hall. But that influx was given greater impetus during the 30s and 40s. Some of the most famous artists of the time came and inhabited rooms around the courtyard and did their work, and in particular it attracted artists from Europe who were being persecuted prior to the Second World War. Uh, and these were people who were dancers, they were painters, they were sculptors, and they were welcomed in here by the Elmhurst, but also by the local community. Uh, they brought with them a whole new way of being, and that legacy lasts today. Nowadays, Dartington is famous for its International Summer School, a unique music event as well as hosting several other educational programmes. They had a big vision, but I think they would have been surprised and largely impressed to see 40-odd years later, it was still doing so many of the things that they had started, still experimenting, still trying to be relevant, still trying to do things differently. The Elmhurst's vision has become a charitable trust, specialising in the arts, sustainable agriculture and social justice. I think towards the end of their lives, they could also see that they'd created something which might not be able to continue because it needed too much money. It needed too much of the money that Dorothy brought with her, which was now running out. And that's been the constant challenge ever since, to maintain the legacy, but to find a way to do it that will work for today and for future generations. <laughs>